got, I got, I got, I got loyalty, got royalty inside my DNA. Well, that 500 mark remains elusive for the Sacramento Kings as they had an opportunity to pull within one game of 500. Instead, they lose to the Chicago Bulls, 113 to 106 at the Golden One Center. Kings now 8 and 11. Are the Chicago Bulls improve 7 and 4. I don't have a lot on this one. To be completely honest with you, I don't have anything positive to say about the Sacramento Kings. I don't have anything positive to say about this game. I don't have anything positive to say about the players. This was just trash. I, okay, here you go. This is Sacramento Kings podcast. We've got to figure out a way to spin this and make it positive. Yeah, I guess here's the positive. It hasn't happened very often this year. That's all I got. I don't know any other way. To, like that, that's That's the only the only positive it just this this type of game hasn't happened too many times it happened against brooklyn Uh, of course it happened against the charlotte hornets you know way back when they went to zero and five and it looked like maybe the season was starting to turn around a little bit after that but this was bad and and, you know honestly this this game it, it had blowout city written all over it in favor of the sacramento kings they got underway there in the first quarter. They went up by 11, and it was like, all right, all right. This is how you follow up that game against the Denver Nuggets at the Golden 1 Center a couple of nights ago. This is how you follow that game up. And then it took a drastic turn, and it looked like blowout city, but in favor of the Chicago Bulls this time. Uh, welcome into the Sacramento Kings podcast Presented by Hoopball in the Hoopball Podcast Network. I am Damian Barling, and I appreciate you so much uh, for tuning in and listening to this program. Appreciate you so much for downloading and subscribing. If you haven't rated and reviewed the show yet, please do. I'd greatly appreciate it. Those five-star ratings go a long way, particularly there on Apple Podcasts. If you got an extra 60 to 90 seconds to leave us a review, we would appreciate that as well. Again, the Kings lose 113 to 106 at the Golden One Center. Zach Levine, 28 points, 3 assists, 1 rebound. Buddy Heald, uh, 24 points, 4 assists, 5 rebounds. Again, no positives to take away from this game. Absolutely none. Uh, You know what's really frustrating about this game, too, is Luke Walton, just the other day, the, the Sacramento Kings down 17, and I think that's something we've got to talk about, too, here, is the Sacramento Kings now are falling into this habit, and they did this a lot last year where they're 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 regularly getting down double digits and trying to dig themselves, you know, out of these deficits. But you go back to you heard it here on this podcast just a couple of nights ago. Luke Walton, a fantastic victory, an impressive win against the Denver Nuggets. Down 17. They fight back. They get the win. Arguably their most impressive win of the season. Luke Walton, you know, stands in there in front of the reporters and says, Yeah, like it's it's good. Like I'm I'm glad we won. I'm worried we were down. You know, 17, but I'm happy we won. But the fact is, we expect to win. We're at home. I know Denver is a good team. No disrespect to them, but we're a good team, too. And we expect to win our games at home. Hell yeah. Okay, Luke. With that. And, and here's, here's Chicago. The Chicago Bulls come in, and they just push the Kings around for four quarters. Or really, I guess it was for three and a half, because as we said there a minute ago, It looked like blowout city to start this game, except it was in favor of the Sacramento Kings. And then, as we mentioned there, they went up by 11, and it looked like, okay, this is how you follow up that game against Denver. This is this is what you do here. You're at home. You've got uh, you've got a a, another four game road trip on the way. You got to make the Texas Triangle coming up here in a little bit. You got to go to Portland. You got all this stuff going on. This is a good way to get out and 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 beat up on a team that I I personally I think is a bad team. And then they just started turning the ball over at a rather shocking rate. It felt like, and I know that they didn't, it felt like they turned the ball over like seven times in a row. And I know at one point early in the second turn, uh, early in the second quarter, they had nine turnovers and a 13 0 run from the Chicago Bulls. And suddenly that 11 point lead had turned into a deficit. And then it just got worse from there. As we said, it, 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 yeah, this game had blowout written all over it, but then it looked like the Sacramento Kings were going to get blown out. They were, they were 
up by 11 in the first quarter. They were down by 16 in the second quarter. The game settled down a little bit. Kings were able to hit a couple of baskets. Uh, They were uh, down 11, headed into halftime. And this is normally the portion of the program where I pull some stats from halftime and I say, hey, here's what the Kings did well. Hey, here, look at this. Hey, here's who's was shooting well. Like, nah, ain't nothing there. It was all bad. There's no meaningful numbers to pull out of the first half for, for you, except 11 turnovers, which actually... 11 turnovers feels shockingly low given the fact that they had nine turnovers early in the second quarter and it felt like they turned the ball over every freaking time they touched it during that 13-0 run. Rashawn Holmes was the only king who you could really say played well there in that first half. Uh, His energy was all over the place. Like he, He was hitting his shots, wasn't turning the ball over. Bogey was three or four from the field, but he turned the ball over three times in the 10 minutes that he played. Again, no positives to take away there in that first half. The third quarter comes around and you're thinking, okay, we saw Luke Walton make some adjustments against the Denver Nuggets. Hot take here coming at you, Kings fans. The Denver Nuggets are a significantly better team than the Chicago Bulls. Well, if Luke Walton can make some adjustments here, settle his guys down, maybe, just maybe, the Kings can make a little run here in the third quarter and we'll see what we got going into the fourth. Maybe they can erase the entire deficit in the third quarter and see what happens here in the fourth. Third quarter guard on the way, and the Kings found themselves down 17 again. And then they found themselves down 19. But he healed a couple of threes. The lead gets down to 13, and you're thinking, maybe? Maybe? Uh, no. No. Not here, at least. Uh, Yogi Farrell hit a couple of Baskets late. I love Jogi Ferrell's energy tonight. There you go. I found something positive to say about the Kings. I love Jogi Ferrell's energy tonight. I I feel like Jogi Ferrell gets an inconsistent amount of run, and I I'm I'm curious what the what the rationale behind you know pro Yogi games and anti Yogi games are. Um, Saw ten minutes, and and maybe it's just a maybe it's just a feel. Maybe he's getting a feel. Maybe maybe it's not Justin James night. Let's stick with. Let's stick with Yogi Ferrell and see how he does out there. But I love Yogi Ferrell's energy. I've, I love Yogi Ferrell's energy most nights that he's entered the game. I don't think I've ever watched Yogi play and go, man, I wish he'd pick it up. I don't think I've ever seen that. Not from him. But he hit a couple of baskets late, and, and the Bulls took some ill-advised shots, and now the 19-point lead was down to 10 headed into the fourth quarter, and you thought, okay, that's well within reach, and... Kings and Bulls traded threes to start the fourth at a near comical rate. And you're looking at this like, yo, is is anybody even going to attempt to play defense? If the Kings are going to win this game, they're going to have to get some stops somewhere. And then the lead finally got to single digits with just under eight minutes to go. Buddy Heald's dunk uh, led to a Bulls timeout. Coming out of the timeout, how would the Bulls respond? Well, the Bulls were absolute trash coming out of that timeout. Back-to-back turnovers. And Amanya Bia leads to three. The lead was down to six. 10-2 run brought the Kings deficit to two. And that was about it. And in the game, you know, kind of remained entertaining. The Kings did what they could to, you know, keep it interesting for the fans who didn't barge out of the building in the third quarter. Uh, But it was one of those games where you ever, you ever watch a game, particularly this season, maybe even the Boston game, maybe both of the Boston games where you're watching it and you're going, man, the Kings, I think the Kings are going to steal this one. I was watching this game going, there's no way the Kings are going to win this. Like, they just can't. Because this is the type of game that you look back on the season that if the Kings had won this game, you look at this like, man, there's something special happening. Because this was, again, this was trash. If the only thing that had fascinated me, the only thing that I was really curious about, that if the Kings had won this game, what would Luke Walton sound like in the press conference? And, and how would the players react? Because, again, the players were completely monotone following the Denver Nuggets game. I think we heard from uh, Corey Joseph on uh, the last podcast as well. He was just, hey, can't go down 17. Got to play better. 
but it's good. We got to win. It's it's good. We just we can't. We, we've got to play better for forty eight minutes. Luke Walton, yeah, Denver's good. We expect to win at home, though. Again, you beat the top team, one of the top team, one of the elite teams in the Western Conference, and you didn't even crack a smile. I was curious what the tone would be if the Kings had actually managed to win this game. Uh, but we're not going to find out because they didn't. And they didn't deserve to. Uh, Chicago actually played really well. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that I've watched a ton of Chicago Bulls games. I have not. Uh, and I can tell you after watching them tonight, I have zero desire to. Uh, they're 7-14. and 14. They're not a team that moves me. They don't have a super. They don't have a must-see player uh, on their roster for me. Zach Levine's doing a hell of a job for them. Uh, and that's it. That's all I'm interested in. Uh, and I'm not that interested in it, to be honest. So I'm not going to pretend to be the uh, the expert here on the Chicago Bulls, but they're 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 not a team that I consider to be good, and they're not going to be a team uh, that I'm going to be watching too many times moving forward unless they're playing the Sacramento Kings or perhaps the Boston Celtics or unless they're playing against somebody on the other roster that I really want to see. But the Kings play, but the uh, the Bulls, excuse me, they played well tonight, and they had stretches where they not only played well, but they played great. Uh, the Kings didn't have any stretches in tonight's game where they played great. Even when they cut that lead down, they didn't play great. Here's Luke Walton. Continue to preach about playing 48. Thought we did a nice job starting the game. We were ready to go. Um, won three of the four quarters, but not well enough to uh, win a game. And we didn't do enough. Uh, our, our main themes for tonight were taking care of the ball. Uh, defend without fouling, keep them off the foul line, make them score on us, and, and give Chicago credit. They played well. And, and we told our guy they play really, really hard. Uh, and coming off a big win, you know, you've seen this type of game a, a million times in the NBA, but we, we were aware of it. We addressed it. I was hoping we weren't going to see it again tonight. Uh, unfortunately, we... Uh, we, we had a little bit of a letdown, um, but give Chicago their credit. They were faster. Uh, they were stronger than us tonight. And, uh, you know, still, you know, proud of the way our group continues to fight. We had, a, as, as you know, 20, 23 points off our 18 turnovers, 29 free throws we gave up. Uh, didn't play uh, the way I feel like we've been playing. And with that said, we still had a, a good look from Buddy down the stretch to take a, a late lead. So uh, proud of the way we continue to, to fight, but got 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 to get better at some things we can control, such as our turnovers and uh, the amount of free throws we're letting other teams shoot. Katie Hunter, Kings TV. Um, I know that especially when you're a team that relies on three-pointers, that there's going to be times where, you know, just as a whole, you're going to struggle as a team off and on. Um, on nights like tonight where you are struggling as a team, you shoot 27%. How much of a focus is it on saying, hey, we need to get the easy buckets, maybe we'll open it up, get to the free throw line, maybe that'll open it up? Yeah, I mean, that's we, we want to have a nice balance of that. Um, and we we talk about it, we work on it, uh, but you know you got as a as a coach you you look at you know with, with the healthy bodies we have, uh, you know we can get Harrison down there in the post, um, but you know a, a lot of the, our aggressive rim attacking players aren't playing right now. So, um, you know, Bogey's not moving great. Uh, he's one of our, our, our uh, dynamic as far as playmaking and, and scores. Um, so we, we, we understand where we're at that uh, we kind of need to make some threes. Uh, but we are we're, we're constantly uh, talking about and addressing, uh, trying, you know, get break. We call it breaking the paint. We want to break the paint as often as possible. We track the amount of times per quarter we break the paint per game. Um, so it's something that we, uh, you know, our players know they hear it every day in practice and, uh, uh, you know, something we focus on. How much time? I mean, you guys obviously were pretty well in the paint, um, especially when the three ball tends to some guys struggle from three ball. How, how much of that was kind of an emphasis getting down low? So, I'm sorry. Say, what, Just what, some of the points in the paint for you guys, it looked like it was kind of a, a key to when, when some of the outside shooters were struggling with their shots. Yeah, it was. It's, it's the balance of, you know, we, you guys, shooters, we want them to shoot. We don't want Belly to start passing up shots. We don't want Harrison and Bogey, Buddy, to pass up the open looks. Um, but 
we do want the balance of attacking and getting inside, looking to draw to create. We had a couple nice possessions in that second half where we got the, you know, we call a blender as far as getting downhill and then, you know, starting to make the defense react to us and the ball ends up in shooters' hands and there's more of a rhythm and those are more of the type of threes that we're, we'd prefer to take. Um, but yeah, we're, we, we, we make a point to try to get it in the paint. Luke, Jason Jones, The Athletic. When it comes to the uh, fouling, what kind of things can you do, emphasize to work on to try to cut down on that? Because it seemed like in a lot of the losses, that's been a problem with the other teams getting to the line a lot. Yeah, uh, we show film on it. We work on it in practice. You got to, today's NBA, you, the, you know, you've got to show your arms. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. If you get an arm bar in there at all, all these players have gotten really good at drawing those fouls. And um, so, you know, it's something we, we work on in practice. It's something we, we show film on. Uh, and then it just, you know, like any, any habits, you got to just keep doing it and doing it and working and showing and showing and, uh, eventually uh, start to get better at things. Touch on a couple of things that Luke Walton mentioned right there. Uh, Kings outscored the Bulls 46-40 to 40 in the paint. Uh, you heard uh, Jason Jones, as well as Luke Walton in his uh, opening statements, uh, mention the number of free throws that they're giving up. Uh, the Bulls shot 25 of 29 from the foul line, uh, while the Sacramento Kings shot 17 of 20. I don't know what I was expecting to hear from Luke Walton. I think it, it, at some point, I, I wonder if during this season, if you know, after a loss like this, and hopefully there aren't too many more of these, and again, if, if you're looking for a bright spot, it, it's that there haven't been a lot of games like this here this season. But I, I wonder if he's just going to... And maybe it's not his style, and given you know what we know, I think, about Luke Walton, and given what we know uh, about his... His dad, maybe it's just, it's not in the Walton style to kind of lay into a team a little bit. But I did wonder if he was going to get after his guys a little bit for the way that they played. You know, he talked about, hey, we were ready to go. We came out in the first quarter and played great, and then we didn't. And and, and that was kind of it. And while he continues to emphasize the things that uh, he, they, they need to do better, uh, I, I just, I, I wonder if at any point he's just, just going to get fired up there. Uh, at the podium. But again, it it doesn't feel like it's his style. Remember before the season started, we were talking about the juggernaut that is the Western Conference, and we do this often. Is it 50-plus wins going to get the eighth seed into the playoffs? There's going to be a a 46-win team to miss the playoffs this year. Sacramento Kings fall to 8-11. and They're in a a group of of a lot of teams down there with the Portland Trailblazers, who they got coming up on Wednesday. They're 8-12. and The Oklahoma City Thunder, they're 8-11. and Kings, as we just mentioned, are 8-11. and The Phoenix Suns, they won tonight. Uh, They're 9-10. and The Minnesota Timberwolves, they're in the seventh spot. They're 10-9. And And the Utah Jazz, they're in the sixth spot at 12-9. and So there are a lot of teams here that haven't quite found their groove. There's a lot of teams here that I don't really know what they are. For example, is San Antonio really this bad? San Antonio, I didn't even mention there in that conversation. They're seven and fourteen right now, and I know that you know San Antonio is notoriously a slow starting team. But good God Almighty, like this slow. I don't know. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is the year that the the, the Popovich Spurs streak comes to an end. Are the Pelicans going to get better? You know, the Pelicans are sitting at six and fourteen. It's one of the bottom records in the entire league. Are they going to get better when Zion Williamson returns here pretty soon? Portland, are they ever going to hit a groove? Oklahoma City, I have maintained, is significantly better than anybody gave them credit for. Though this is about where I see them. You know, eight and eleven over the course of nineteen games. We'll see what they do, and we can make it an even, you know, twenty here. But th- th- this is about where I see them. If they're eight and twelve, yeah, you can see that. You can see that. Get halfway through the season, they're eight games under five hundred. I, I I believe it. Phoenix, I don't, I I don't know. I think Phoenix is really well coached, but how is this like? Are they going to be able to maintain this pace? I don't like Minnesota, and I can't tell you why. I just don't buy it. I don't buy Minnesota. I didn't. This offseason, I didn't last season, and I just sitting at 10 and 9, I think, yeah, they're probably going to hit like a 
you know, a, a stretch where they drop six of seven and they kind of exit the conversation there for a while. Houston's still rolling. We know what Dallas is doing. Clippers, Nuggets, who we just saw in the Los Angeles Lakers, along with the Milwaukee Bucks, who won tonight by like 40, was it like 44 or something like that. Of course, they beat the Knicks, so it doesn't really count, but the the Bucks have won back-to-back games by 40-plus points. We mentioned Phoenix. They got a win against Charlotte tonight. So it's, you know, it, in, in the, gosh, the Warriors lost again. They lost to the Atlanta Hawks. So these games, when you when you look at the when you look at the records, when you look at the, 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 the where where the teams kind of in the company of the Sacramento Kings are, when you look at those those records, you look where they're at. That's what makes these games significantly more frustrating. Because you look at this one, and you're like, man, Chicago, like y'all dropped it to Chicago. You know, and, and when you had the opportunity, you got you 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 got to go to Portland. Still a difficult place to play. Still a good team. Still a great backcourt. Now you got to go in there or, or all of a sudden you drop that one and you're staring at, oh man, we're four games under 500 again. All right, where are we going here? And just looking at the Western Conference or at least the bottom portion of the Western Conference in its totality is what makes games like this even more frustrating. I mean, obviously the most frustrating part is they just played bad. It's one thing, you know, they 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 lose that game against Denver. They fight back like you, you, you know, wins. Not all wins and losses are the same. You know what I mean? Like 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 for example, we we switched to the NFL here. I said this on my, I said this on the Monday edition of my daily sports podcast. If you haven't checked it out yet, it's called the podcast with Damian Barling and uh, Ventures Outside Conversations regarding the Sacramento Kings. You can go check those out. But. You look at the way the San Francisco 49ers lost, right? You look at their two losses this year. Baltimore, Seattle, I think it was like a combined six points. You look at those two losses and you think, man, in my eyes, you know, they, they, you know, there's a there's a L in the loss column, but you know, they haven't lost anything in those games. You know, to switch gears, you look at the Oakland Raiders. And you're thinking, man, the Oakland Raiders have surprisingly played some pretty good ball this year. And then they go in and they the gearing up for this showdown, the AFC West showdown with the Kansas City Chiefs. The last time we're going to see Oakland versus Kansas City, and they lay an egg. You know, and now you've got two games, back-to-back games for the Oakland Raiders where they're getting blown out. And I'm looking at this like, well, there's a lot in those losses. So you can take away a lot from a win. You can take away a lot from a loss. You can look at a win. It's like, ah, I, I don't know that I got anything out of that. I mean, quite, quite honestly, if the Kings had come back to win this game, like, I don't know what I would have gotten out of that. Like, man, you really struggled to beat a bad team. First thing that I want to see the Kings address, and, you know, Luke Walton talked about free throws, uh, you know, free throws given up. I want to talk about falling into a deficit. Falling into a double-digit deficit and having to claw yourself out. And maybe part of that is putting it, maybe that maybe part of that is the free throws that Luke Walton was just talking about. Maybe part of that is their opponents being, you know, in the penalty with like seven and a half minutes to go every freaking quarter, which is what it felt like here tonight uh, against the Kings. And all of, with all of the talk that I had earlier about turnovers, the two teams wound up even, 18-18 on turnovers. So, you know, they got, they got Portland coming up and then they're headed off to Texas. And, uh, you know, I don't know what that San Antonio game is going to look like. But there's an MVP candidate and James Harden they're going to have to deal with. And I think there's an MVP front runner, at least up there with LeBron James and Luka Doncic, they're going to have to deal with in Dallas. Looks like Marvin Bagley is going to be out for the remainder of the week. Uh, De'Aaron Fox is getting a little bit closer. But, you know, well, even when those guys come back, the guys who have been on the floor are going to have to make adjustments. They're going to have to play a little bit differently because the big dogs are back. And it's going to... I, I would think it's going to kind of ruffle the flow of the Kings a little bit here. Maybe, maybe ruffle is the wrong word. They're going to have to, it's almost like they're going to have to go through like a little mini camp again to get all playing together. Uh, but that's not going to happen this week. We'll see what happens when they take on the Portland Trail Blazers. Of course, we will be here with you on Wednesday, immediately following that game between your Sacramento Kings and the Portland Trailblazers there in Portland. It's a busy week here for the Sacramento Kings. 
It is a busy week for the podcast as we've got a uh, Friday night basketball coming up. We've got some weekend games. We've got a back to back on the way. A whole lot of podcasts coming up. Uh, if you just can't get enough of my slightly under the weather melodious voice, you can check out uh, the daily sports podcast, uh, creatively titled The Podcast with Damian Barling. That is available on all of your podcast platforms that you're listening to this one on. If you're a health and fitness nut, you can check out my brand new podcast in the game that I host with my trainer over at Game Fit, Lim Adams, trainer to a number of professional athletes that you know. Uh, that is a strictly health and fitness podcast that we just launched a couple of weeks ago. We're very proud of where that one is at. Uh, but if you're just all about the Kings talk, we appreciate you being here. Subscribe, uh, rate, and review. We'll be back here on Wednesday night. The Sacramento Kings lose tonight to the Chicago Bulls. They fall to 8 and 11. Can they get back on track Wednesday against Portland? We'll be back immediately following that game.